Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction for you guys. Take out of course, we're checking out the newest episode of Stargirl Season 2. Stargirl Season 2, Episode 3, Summer School, Chapter 3. Now, in the last episode, Jade became Jade. Like, she finally, I guess, transformed in a sense. She absorbed the power from the lantern. And then she was gone. You know, she was a big part of the episode, and I was expecting her to stick around, but with the introduction of her in the beginning of the episode, kind of showing a flashback leading up to, of course, her fighting Stargirl at the end of episode one of this season, um, a misunderstanding, if you will, her brother. She mentioned her brother. It makes sense that she left to go find her brother, which that makes a lot of sense in my opinion. Um, I'm hoping we see her again, because I feel like introducing her is a big step in the direction of these characters and this world and the new JSA. I hope she does return. It might be due to budget, but I think there might be a story reason behind it as well. We have a new villain, The Shade, who I thought for a second was called The Shadow, but The Shade, he shows up in Blue Valley and they're kind of questioning things. And of course, you know, Courtney's mom is like really suspicious because right away he goes to her. And of course, her relationship with villains in the past. I mean, she literally worked for the main villain of the Injustice Society. And now like a new potential villain, which is an actual villain, of course, is there and uh, goes right to her immediately. And so all that craziness. Uh, Cindy, of course, has Eclipso and uh, destroyed her stepmother figure. <laughs> that was Eclipse was telling him, or telling her to fight back, but I'm not really sure. Um, it's about to start right now. You're probably wondering, where's the ghost? The ghost has been having a rough time at work, and she's exhausted, so I told her to sit out and don't worry about it, because at the end of the day, what matters is you, and I'm here to continue watching the show, and she'll catch up when she can, and that's completely fine. Okay, guys, let's get to now. Stargirl, Season 2, Episode 3, Summer School, Chapter 3. Let's go. Another flashback. That picture again. I really like that picture. That's really cool. Mm. Thunderbolt is more powerful than Green Lantern. Oh. Okay. But in my hands, they got Solomon Grundy. What? Ooh, Wildcat. Awesome. Sorry, Pat, just John. Hey, when when I get back, we'll have that egg knob, okay? Something tells me you're not gonna come back. He's still on that paper, but he's terrible at it. <laughs> the Shade has no idea who he's up against. First of all, he's obviously... Well, you don't know what you're up against, I don't think. Somebody's butt we're gonna kick. Carefully. Careful. Very, very careful. Yeah, yeah, I got it. How convenient. How convenient. Your wish may be granted, maybe. Oh. So cool. Ah, okay. It should be Gaffigan. I heard he was cast. I can hear. I can definitely tell it's him. Yeah, I would assume, yeah, panic. Oh my gosh. Really? Makes sense. Makes sense. Calling Grundy a dog? <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Killed Dr. Midnight. You, you can't punch a shadow court. You can try. Maybe. Pat? Yeah. Pat, any ideas? I, I feel like he's in there. He can travel through shadows, you know what I'm saying? He's probably in there. Exactly. Exactly. He's in there. Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Perhaps. He doesn't care. The flickering of the light when he grabs that. Ah, uh, 
it's not there. I really must insist. Oh shit. And he's gone. What the hell? He's hearing it. He's, he heard that. That's not good. You shouldn't talk about this stuff at school. Summer school. Don't talk about it. Oh my gosh, they're bullying a little girl. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi Mike. Yep, the pen. The newest member of the Justice Society of America. You got to be real specific with the wishing. Let me tell you. No, yes. Mike, no more wishes. Mike, no. The is too unpredictable. I don't know. They're probably going to have it to where Mike can control Thunderbolt. He might, because Starman's looking for him right now. I can only pick someone like me to be partners with. Someone mm. feels okay. completely and utterly alone. And Mike does. That's really how he feels. All the people will be able to save you and me together, brother and sister. That sounds yeah. great. Mm. Really, but... The Thunderbolt picked me. So yes. I'm like you. So... I was meant to be a superhero. It's my destiny. Mike deserves to be in the JSA. We voted. Just call me Mikey Thunder. Thank Mikey you. Thunder. <laughs> oh, so that's terrible. That's William Zarek's old house. That's the wizard, right? Interesting. I mean, it makes sense why he's there, Did but Mike? glad they figured out the wish thing. Thanks, Dad. Let's go. Whoa. Sorry, man. I feel bad they left him behind, but at the same time, you know, it was a decision. He's writing a new question. Yeah, he's waiting for him. We could try the more genteel approach. You murdered Dr. Midnight. You don't deserve the genteel approach. You don't know what you're talking about. Now sit. Why are you here? We won't let you He wants a clip, so I'm assuming. Because you were a member of the Injustice Society. I have no dark design on Blue Valley. Stay out of my way. And I'll be gone before you know it. Why are you here? Mm, it, answer. Thunderbolt. I wish you'd zap the villain known as quote the shade unquote. Not to be confused with the lamp. Mike. It's like nothing. He's just... Oh my gosh. He's weak against the staff. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Well, Is yeah, it? Yeah, I know I should have listened, but I mm -hmm. didn't. I didn't either in the beginning. That's true. Hey, Thank she's being honest. For Mike, Mom. Well, I kind of just wish it was in better hands. Nope. Thunderbolt? You're a loser. He's gonna get the. He's gonna get Thunderbolt. And Cindy has it right now, and using it. He's gonna kill those children. Hmm. There you guys have it. Episode 3 of Stargirl Season 2 Summer School Chapter 3. This was a Mike-centric episode, and I really don't have an issue with that, because I feel like Mike was not really shown a lot in Season 1. He really didn't have a lot of screen time, and then definitely within so far within Season 2 up to this episode... He was just kind of around. Like, you saw him from time to time, not really. In this episode, it is fully focused on Mike, and it makes sense because he feels left out. He feels alone. He doesn't feel that connected to his father anymore because now Courtney being Stargirl and him trying to help out the kids, the new JSA, you know, JSA 2.0, Mike feels like he is just kind of there, you know? So I get it. 
So the pin, they had teased the pin in season one, the Thunderbolt, and the flashback tied into its previous owner. And I'm like, who is this guy? Like, oh, and then the Wildcat cameo was great. That was really cool. But um, so Mike grabs that pin just out of the blue because because Thunderbolt wanted him to grab it. It's like, oh, you're using a pin near me? I want to short circuit that other pin. So you got to just grab me and use me. So Thunderbolt comes out. It's voiced by Jim Gaffigan. I think he's a great comedian. And I heard he was cast. I'm like, interesting. I, I don't remember... I don't remember who he was casted for, but now, okay, this actually kind of fits in terms of of, of him portraying, you know, voicing the character. It was pretty funny. Um, so it was all about Mike trying to understand the rules and the Thunderbolt being kind of vague in some instances in terms of, you know, how you are specific with wishes, even though he said you got to be very specific because he says, I, I, I want some water dumped on his head. It's like I met in a glass. Well, you got to be specific. And then he tells the, you know, Thunderbolt to say, to stop those kids, like tell, like make them stop. And literally just kept dropping stop signs all, all over the place. Trying to <laughs> trying to stop. Like, well, it's not going to stop until they stop. And it, it will not stop until they stop. And then eventually the stop signs stop falling. Eventually. Um, what I like too, is that Mike thought this was his answer to being a part of the JSA to not feel left out essentially. And so he felt like he had his way in and I was kind of rooting for that. I'm thinking, okay, so Mike having this, I think it might be interesting. I think it was an interesting direction, but then they kept throwing these curveballs where, okay, you can help, but you, we, we got to have a very, very specific way of a asking the question or wishing for the location of the shade. He, fi he, get, he they finally figure it out after a long, there's a montage of them trying to figure out the right way to, to ask the question so that it's very specific, not referring to like a, a lampshade or something. This is about the shade. So they figure it out. He's benched back at, um, back at their little hideout, you know, at the pit stop. Is that what it's called? The pit stop. Anyways. Um, and then he decides he wants to write another question. And I'm talking about the mic portion of it. I'll get to the other stuff in a little bit about the shade and everything. Uh, so he burst in to when the shade is talking to the JSA and Pat. And then he asked the question and then everything went to hell. And he screwed up. And I think what was smart is that they were highlighting this is how Courtney was at the beginning of Stargirl. If you remember back on season one, Courtney was not always figuring out or always making the right choices. She was making mistake after mistake after mistake and eventually learning because you have to make mistakes to then learn from them. You can't just have Courtney be completely like following rules or knowing exactly what to do and not making any mistake or not having anything, you know, fail essentially on certain missions or certain things she has to do as Stargirl. So having Mike fail like that was significant but i was like okay this is a learning thing then he accidentally says i wish this was in better hands and then it shows up at this kid's house i don't think we've ever seen him before but i'm guessing i'm trying to remember i'm i'm guessing this is the new thunderbolt that's going to join the jsa because eventually i think they're going to run into him or he's going to or the thunderbolt's going to lead him to the jsa because the thunderbolt knows there's a new jsa team so maybe they're going to find a way to have him join because i feel like the jsa is going to grow in terms of the roster but i think that might be hinting at certain characters coming and going like there's going to be certain times where the jsa is going to be this team and then we're going to have this version of the team and i feel like it's going to be like a revolving door I feel just based on the fact we have Jade and now we have the Thunderbolt. I feel like they're going to start slowly introducing more of the new J JSA where they're going to be coming and going. And so it's going to be a thing to where at times we're going to have certain characters in the roster and sometimes we're not. So we'll see how they handle that. But that, I feel like that's how they're kind of setting this up in terms of we have the core JSA team. Now we're going to start expanding. So I feel bad for Mike. I hope they figure out what he's going to do. I, I hope they find a way. Uh, maybe maybe Pat will start actually showing Mike the ropes as he was asking, I think, in the first episode of season two of, you know, Stripe to figure out how to, to, to operate the damn robot. That's what I thought he was going to do at first. I thought he was going to push the whiteboard out of the way and jump in the Stripe and fly off <laughs> to where they're at. Not the case at all. He was trying to find another way to help and to stop the shade and everything. It didn't happen. So now what's about the shade side of it all? He shows up when Courtney's mom, and I forget her name, don't kill me, 
I said, I'd say Courtney's mom. We know, we know who I'm talking about. Courtney's mom is looking through the inventory. The shade shows up. Of course, the cell phone is not working. It fell out of the purse when he pops in. Of course, he was he was there. He was waiting, essentially. And uh, he's looking for a Calypso. We don't know why, though. Um, and we'll get to you know, the, the little questioning thing in a bit. But So he's he's looking for a Calypso. That's, that's the main reason why he wants access. So, of course, it's not there. Cindy has a Calypso. And so he leaves. So I think the cell phone started working after that point. And they really didn't show it too clearly, but I'm pretty sure for a brief shot, you see the light on the phone indicating the phone is now operational, which means when he uses powers, electronics go to shit and everything falls apart. Um, so they find him at the wizard's house and he's just chilling there waiting for them. He knew they were showing up and he offered them tea. He's like, oh, I don't know if I have, I don't have enough crumpets or he, I think he said crumpets. Is that what he said? Or biscuits or whatever. But he, he, he offered tea, sit down, sit down, sit down. Hmm. So they all sit down and they're questioning, why are you in blue Valley? What are you doing? And he's like, and eventually he eventually he's like, I'm not playing coy. It's just best if you don't know. And I thought that was an interesting answer. Of course, Mike runs in screaming out his new wish before I think he, he, he actually so he actually finishes his wish, but the shade without even getting out of his seat, without really much effort, he takes them all down with all the shadows flying out, attacking the Thunderbolt, attacking everybody, throwing them out of the chairs and on the ground. And Courtney's on a wall upside down. Then she turns all the way around and he's sitting there and he's just, he's moving his hands and stuff, but he's not really doing much. And then it's over. And then he leaves and he says, stay out of my way kind of indicating in a way that he is a he's of course a villain because he worked for the isa justice society of america but when he was confronted about killing the original dr midnight he says you don't know what you're talking about so what does that in what does it mean does he not what exactly happened to dr Midnight? did someone else kill dr midnight and it looked like it was the shade but it wasn't actually at all because the shade aligned with it in just society but not for long I'm curious how that, how, how that's going to be explained. You know, what did he mean by that? You know, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Will you enlighten us? The end of the episode with the shade on top of the clock tower or whatever, that one tall area of the, uh, of blue Valley and touching the box, the empty box where Eclipso was and says that he's going to kill the, he's going to kill them, kill them kids. Referring to the fact that Eclipso is going to kill the JSA. I wonder if that means the shade is not necessarily a good guy, but he's more of like protecting people from being killed by Eclipso. Maybe, I don't know. I'm curious. I'm curious what that means. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Eclipso was the one that killed Dr. Midnight. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that was the case. Maybe it wasn't the shade after all. I don't know. I, I don't know what the reveal is going to be. Um, I just looking at that box. There's a box right here, and I think it's like a ladybug, and there's a ladybug in that box. Anyways, off track. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I need to mention, particularly about this episode. Uh, some funny moments for sure, and um, I'm glad they they, gave, they highlighted Mike in this episode. I think that was pretty smart on their part. Uh, not really much else to say. I mean, overall, I thought this episode was pretty solid, and I'm glad they focused on Mike and. We have a new member, potentially, of the JSA with uh, the new Thunderbolt at the end there. And uh, the Shade was looking for a Calypso, and we don't know exactly why. And they're keeping that close to the vest. They don't want us to know just yet what's going on with that. So what did you guys think of this episode of Stargirl? I'm curious to know your thoughts, guys. Whatever thoughts you have, let me know in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.